Most people are gonna hate me for this one. Have you seen these pumps for people's sleeping pads? It's like 50 bucks. Just f blow it up. A fanny pack. I feel like a lot of the time it's just people who like keep their freaking like weed and like their drug paraphernalia in it so they can just have it ready at any point so they can be like, oh dude, freaking beautiful view. Gotta, gotta toke one up, dude. Hammocks. Oh no. Overrated. Yo, 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 welcome to Trail Tales, everybody. I don't know. Yo, coming yo, out, yo. Coming out hot. Shut up, Baker. This is the intro. You're not in yet. Go back to your... <laughs> go back. Go away. Um, welcome to Trail Tales, everybody. And uh, if you couldn't tell already, this is going to be a fun one. Today, Baker is back on the show, and we're going to be going over some backpacking gear items that we think are, you could say, overrated, or maybe suck, or maybe if you use these gear items, you should just throw everything you own away and never touch a trail again that's an exaggeration i don't know what title i'm going with basically that's so i'm just covering all the pieces right now um but you know it's it's gonna be a fun episode we're just we're just goofing around here um although there might be some nuggets of truth as well we'll find out but um that's what we're gonna be doing today and so before we jump into it real quick just uh just go ahead and just demolish the subscribe button i mean You've been told to smash it. I don't want you to smash it. I want you to destroy it. It shouldn't even be there anymore by the time you're done with it. Subscribe to the Trail Tales YouTube channel and listen, or, or sorry, um, and leave a five-star review if you're listening. If you just refuse to watch on YouTube, like whatever, I get it. Um, but yeah, just leave a, leave a five-star review uh, on Apple or Spotify or whatever your app is and help out the show. And um, also... If you're only watching on YouTube and you're curious where you can listen to the show, you can find Trail Tales on any podcast app. Again, Apple, Spotify. Uh, what other apps even are there? Stitcher? I don't know. Some weird, obscure BS that one person... Overcast. Overcast, yeah. Like it's, that's, that's an iOS one. That's, a, I, that's the one I use. I like uh, it. The, a, weird and obscure, exactly. And so I think that's a great oh, segue weird. into right. bringing in our guest, actually, um, who's already made his way into the intro, <laughs> Baker Bocorn. He's back. <laughs> He's back on the I'm show. Back. Are yo, you yo, yo. That's, is that how we greet the yo, listeners yo, yo. slash What's viewers? We, we have three yo's. Yeah. Just like a, like a yo, yo, but yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. What's that from? Is that from like The Office or something? Um, uh, why is that? Not a blank. That's not from, a blank. That's from, anyways. Um, Don't know. Are you ready to talk shit about backpacking gear? Yeah, I'm. I'm very excited for this episode because usually when it comes to like things where we're talking about gear or uh, overrated or stuff like that where we often have kind of very similar opinions. So, you know, sometimes it's like, there's not as much controversy as there could be, but I actually think in this case, I found a few items that I think are overrated that you actually do use and carry. And so I think we could have some, this, this could get very heated very fast. This might be the last episode I do. I don't know. Oh man. Be, oh man. I might be disallowed from the show after this. So. Disallowed from the show. We'll see. see we'll banned. see. I see. This isn't, I, I wish I could rethink my list. Maybe I'll try to think of some on the fly. There might be there might be one in here that you use, but um, in my list that is. But I wasn't going. I wasn't going for the throat when I was coming up with mine. At least well, not, not more, your throat specifically, yeah. Baker. So yeah, we'll see. No, it it was more like I don't know. These are I, I guess I could have picked a bunch of ones that maybe would overlap, but these ones I knew you carried, so I thought they'd be different, <laughs> and I thought it'd be a, a little bit like. It more interesting if we weren't, uh, yeah, you know, listening to the same things or if we had some like d debate on these. So this also is true. just kind of curious what you think. Maybe they're maybe they're not overrated. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Um, no, I this th that's just gonna make it way better. Let's be honest. Um, but with that said, I will just th point out since you're gonna be ripping on me for my gear, apparently, um, I, I will just point out like the 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 silliest thing I've ever seen Baker do is we went um on a couple day backpacking trip a couple years ago in Colorado. I guess to be fair, it wasn't a long trip. It was only, if I recall, like maybe one full day and then like an afternoon on the first day and then like a morning on the second day. So it wasn't like a, a long trip, but this dude literally all he brought was like a couple packs of pop tarts, maybe a protein bar and a bag of chips. That was it. Like literally no cook, no cook. I mean, that's that's one thing. I guess a lot of people go no cook, but it was just like, it was literally just like a couple snacks and that was it. Like it was, it was amazing and just yeah. disturbing to, to be quite honest. I was quite disturbed. 
I was trying to remember what trip that I was thinking today because, well, this will lead into one of the things. But I was like trying to remember there was some trip I went on where it was either you or Joe was making fun of me for what I brought because it was just like two total or two or three total items of food. <laughs> yeah. And it was like a lot of just the same thing. And, and that now I remember it was definitely. Yeah, because it was like. It was short enough that I was like, I can just get away with, you know, <laughs> I could just starve like, I don't know. for three days. I well, mean. it was enough calories. It was enough. I was just kind of like it was just two or three of the same thing. And I was just like, oh, I'll just take this ba- <laughs> this whole bag of Fritos and like a whole thing of trail mix and then maybe a pop tart. Like, yeah, all right, that's all it was. Done. Damn. Something like that. Yeah. Well, you got through it. Um, OK, I guess if that's a good segue, Baker. Actually, no. One more. I want to tell a quick story here since this is Trail Tales. Um, this has nothing to do with the topic, but I just thought you would appreciate this. Um, yeah. So a couple weeks ago, I was doing a trail run here in Hawaii, and it was the first time that I had gone trail running in like months. And so it's not like I'm a regular doing this, especially at this spot. And I was going at a, a brand new spot I'd never been to before. And so, you know, you get you get the jitters, you know, it wasn't like anything crazy. It was like eight miles or whatever. But, you know, you get the jitters, the excitement. And as I'm rolling up to the, uh, the parking lot, I see signs and like volunteers and people working for a 100 mile ultra marathon going on on the exact fucking loop that i was about to run (laughs) and i had no idea i had zero fucking clue i just show up and like it was just like the biggest ultra marathon in hawaii is going on right then and there and i'm like shit i was like should i even go but i was like you know what no, nah, dude, I'm going to go. And so <clears throat> I'm out there. And here's the thing. this It's not like the trail was closed because the marathon's going on. But like it was pretty much just the runners, the people associated with the race and kind of like touristy hike, like day hikers that are, you know, they're not really wearing like proper hiking gear for the lack of a better word. You know, they're just kind of like out for like a mile or whatever, just like a little stroll. They're wearing like flip flops or whatever. Um, and so... I was up in my full getup, you know, I looked like I belonged in the marathon basically, <laughs> right? but yeah. I wasn't in the marathon. And so like, <laughs> I'm only doing eight miles. By the time I got there, it was like the second day for these people. So they're like at oh. the end. So they're on like mile 90 and like, I'm just fucking whizzing by <laughs> these people, dude. They're like, they're like stumbling around at that point. I think a lot of the fast runners had probably already finished too so it was kind of like the the tail end of the finishers that were still going and so like these people are just destroyed and i'm just like i'm flying by them and they're like oh my god you're looking good and i over and over i had to be like no i'm not running i didn't know this was going it was total yeah. coincidence i'm an idiot like I, oh. it was it was ridiculous dude and i was also going the opposite way of a lot of them too and oh, so, geez, so they like were like looking way. at me like this this guy's like going the wrong it was just it, it was, and I was like, and your clothes past, are all clean. And dude, I like, like how? <laughs> yeah, how is I know, it? Right? so fresh. Yeah. <laughs> I like ran past like an aid station. They're like trying to give oh. me like water. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not <laughs> like, it's just a coincidence. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. But anyways, well, like, what do you say? Is like, oh, I'm not running. It's like, you are, it's like, I'm not running in the, I'm not in the race. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you have to like, I'm not in the race technically. Yeah. I had to be like, no. I'm not racing. I had no idea this was going on. Right. I'm an idiot. I'm never going to run again in my life. That's basically what I said. Uh, but um, That's amazing. Yeah. But I, I, I finished um, my eight <laughs> finished miles. All eight miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Felt Good. great. And, what was uh, the name of the race? I think I've seen videos about the that. The Hurt 100. Yeah. Okay. I, I have seen, like, so I, I saw, I think I saw a video on YouTube about it. It looked really intense. It looked yeah. kind of cool, actually. Yeah. It stands for Hawaiian Ultra Running Team, I think, was what Hurt stands for. It's a very okay. convenient acronym. It's, that's yeah. what it seems like. But um anyways, okay. Yeah. So That's I just wanted cool. to, I but, wanted to tell that story on the show and I haven't found an avenue yet. This was a couple of weeks ago, so I wanted to get that in there. But um That's a good one. Okay, what's your what's your first overrated piece of gear, Baker? All right, since we're talking about um food and my dietary choices that you thought were so unusual, the first overrated piece is gonna be stove and just cooking cooking apparatuses in general. Yeah. Uh and so, you know, like this is a and this is something that I think you can you can personally attest. You've seen me hike, you know. I, like we did this, it was like an overnighter I did with you. Didn't bring a stove, but even more so on the AT when I was hiking with Jessica, she was carrying a stove, and I still didn't bring food that required cooking. Like, I, like literally, <laughs> I didn't even have to carry the stove. I didn't have to carry the fuel. I didn't have to carry any of that stuff. She, we could have, I could have just used the stove for free essentially. Uh, so even the whole like, oh, I'd save weight. That, that argument doesn't even count. I just 
didn't carry. So I just like I didn't carry food that required cooking, not even cold soaking, just like it's just eat, it's ready to eat the way it is. And so, I mean, for me that like, I don't know, you just like there's so many good foods that are just that don't require any preparation at all. I just love the convenience of like you never have to worry about sitting down for a while, cooking it. When you get to camp, you don't have to be like starving and like, oh, I got to I got to cook. And you don't have to clean up anything afterwards. You don't have to worry about having enough water. It makes like dry camping a little simpler for me. And also a, a big one for me is when it's cold out. I like this. Is, that was kind of a big reason I stopped doing on the AT is like when it got colder, I hated having to like, like use the, the stove and my hands get all cold and That's all that so stuff. That's so weird because I feel like most people that are no cook are like, but if it's cold enough, I will do it. But you're like, no, when it's cold, it's even worse for me. That's no, because so I would literally like, I would get to camp and I would start eating as I'm setting my tent up or I would just get in my, like, like get in my quilt and just eat in there because I was like, I just didn't want to be outside of my, like, I didn't want to be out in the cold anymore, you know? I would just like stick my head out in the vestibule, eat a few bites, whatever. And I know that's definitely not like good in terms of food safety with bears and stuff. <laughs> but I don't know. This is like the AT. I wasn't like super worried about like, yeah, there's no bears on the AT. Definitely don't go. Well, I would, there's no grizzly bears. I, would, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't do this. In, I probably wouldn't do this in grizzly country. I wouldn't. Eat, I would eat before I get to camp if I was going to do that. I wouldn't yeah. be like in my in my tent. But either way, I don't know. They're just you. Just you don't need a stove. You don't need to cook. There's plenty of good stuff. Also, it makes town food like real cooked warm food when you get to town it just makes it taste so much better when you haven't been like <laughs> when you turn, and i guess like <laughs> when you make yourself suffer for days on end i'll tell you well, right now I, i'll tell you right yeah. now when you're eating pasta sides and nor sides for three days town food still tastes pretty fucking good when you finally exactly, get to it. exactly though but that's the thing is like the it's the food that you can cook in the backcountry unless you're going to spend a lot of time preparing it or it's like really good like something you've freeze-dried yourself or it's like a really expensive freeze-dried type thing it's just not even that good it's like so you put all this effort in, you carry extra weight, you just deal with the extra hassle of having to prepare, having to clean your pot and all that stuff. And it's not even that much better than just like a bag of chips or like a, a bunch of like a tortilla with peanut butter or like like trail mix. It's just not it's not that much better. It's so it's like I mean, it's, it's, it's like it's like it's it's not it's not like it's if, if it was equivalent to like town food. Yeah, I probably would go out of my way to like carry the maybe the gear to do that. But it's not it's not even really close to it generally, especially on a through hike. You can't really afford to be eating like Mountain House every night. So, I don't know. That's anyway, that's my thoughts on that's my thoughts. What do you think? You know, um, I mean, I've always carried a stove. I can't see myself going without a stove. But I will say after my experience on the PCT in 2022, my um, my understanding of those who go stoveless definitely increased. Like, I feel like before. I hiked in the desert and stuff. I was solidly like, if you don't carry a stove, like you're, you're an idiot. Like, what are you doing? Like on the, on the AT, I feel like most people had a stove, but on the PCT, I noticed like a lot more people did not have stove. I would say it was just as common for people to go no stove on the PCT oh, as, as, um, and that's, that's anecdotal obviously, but, um, I, I won't lie. Like, especially through the desert hiking in, you know, hot temperatures with little access to water, not, I, I still think I would bring a stove if I were to do it again, but I could understand a lot easier why people chose to just forego the stove in those scenarios. Um, the only thing I'll say is I, I, I think you brought up a good point about, you know, if you're, if the food you're going to cook is kind of sh shitty anyways, then what's the point of even cooking it? Like you might as well just save the effort. Um, that's a good point. However, I do think that you can make better meals with a stove if you just have to put in that extra effort and, and if you're not were or you're not willing to put in that extra effort or extra money i guess as you kind of said there it, it, to buy those more expensive dehydrated meals i think if you're not willing to do that then for like you know mild weather hiking if i could see not bringing the stove um but I'll, i i think i'm always going to bring the stove i'm not going to lie have i you just ever tried not though no uh, not, I mean, maybe for like, just like an overnight. Dude, I don't know. This just like, I'm just afraid <laughs> I wouldn't, like, I'm afraid I wouldn't get enough calories is the thing. Okay. Because I, I, dude, I don't know. I, I just feel like I always eat like a really big meal at dinner and I just, I, I, yeah, I'm, see, I'm also actually, a little picky too. I don't know. I just don't think yeah, I do it. Yeah, that's fair. I also see the whole big meal at dinner or lunch, like lunch, whatever. I don't like that because sometimes you have to hike like into the night 
And so now you have to make a decision like, do I sit down and waste 30 minutes like cooking? Or like for me, it was just like, oh, I can keep hiking. Like, you know, sometimes, especially on a through hike or just overnight trips in general, you have to go further than you think sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you start to get hangry and you don't want to waste more time in the dark. <laughs> like cooking when you when you could be hiking getting to camp sooner like your final desk, your final camping spot sooner so i don't know that's another thing i like is that it's just like if i need to walk and eat i can do it because probably whatever i'm eating doesn't require i mean it doesn't require any preparation so probably i can eat while walking if i have to so. yeah that's fair i yeah. guess um okay so this, this next one for me this is one i feel like it wasn't until like the past year or two that i really noticed these being mentioned more i feel like couple of years ago even i wouldn't have even I'm, I'm sure they i'm sure these existed then but i wouldn't have even fathomed that anybody would take this gear seriously and i don't think this is one you're going to see many through hikers carrying i think this is more going to be towards like the the weekend warriors the gear nerds kind of people the more uh glamping kind of backpackers um i'm gonna throw some shade dude have you seen these pumps for people's sleeping pads have you I, yeah, seen these I've they're like well, these lightweight, small, and to be fair, they don't weigh that much. I'm sure I've never even looked into them that much. I'm sure they're not that heavy. It's not like it's going to, you know, break your back carrying the damn thing. But like, is it really that difficult to blow up your sleeping pad? <laughs> like so difficult that you have to bring an extra piece of gear, one more thing to keep track of, one more thing that'll add a couple ounces, I'm assuming to your pack. Is it really that inconvenient to blow up your pad that people are like actually bringing pumps? I don't get this one. Have you seen these things? So I actually don't think I've seen the pump. What, what I have seen is, um, and this, like, I don't know if it's any better, but I've seen kind of like some multi-purpose, like, so it's the stuff sack of a, like a uh, sleeping or of the sleeping pad or just kind of a stuff sack in general. And it basically, you can attach it onto the input nozzle of the sleeping pad. And you basically, you, you kind of like trap some air in there and you like roll it and it forces the air in. So it's, it, it's a, achieving a similar thing where you don't need to directly blow it up with your own breath. Yeah. But it, it's still like multi, this is like a bag. It's multi-purpose, I guess. I'm, I think the, one of the newer Neo Airs that we bought, uh, came with this. It's like the older ones. Yeah. Died, I think the newer one had yeah. it with it. So I don't know if you've ever seen, have you seen that before? Um, just vaguely. Yeah. But yeah. dude, I'm telling you, these pumps are a thing the, I think the so most, I've never, I haven't seen the actual pump. Okay. What yes. do you know what one of the name of them is? I'm so I look just it looked it up. Um, I think, Right now, one of the popular ones is called the Flextail Zero Pump. Um, it weighs 1.2 ounces. So, it's, again, it's not like these are heavy. But, dude, this shit costs... Where is the price again? It's like it's like 50 bucks. Like, oh, 50 no, I, bucks just nope. for the damn... Like, dude, come on. Just blow uh, it up. <laughs> like, just fucking also, blow it up. <laughs> dude, in their, in their marketing, like, the person is has it clipped to a carabiner on the outside of their pack. What on earth are you needing to have it accessible while walking? Unless it has other, okay. Does it have any other function? To yeah, it may, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I Wait, really it's haven't battery. It's battery power. I know. Like oh. I said, I really haven't done much research into this. I've just seen it in like thumbnails and I know Dan, I think Dan Becker's done some videos on it or something like, okay. So they're battery. Okay. So they're battery powered. I thought you still had to like, you know, manually like pump it or whatever. Oh, which, no, 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 no. It's battery power. Okay, yeah. so this is battery power. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't I mean, tell if there's any just... other uses, but I don't know. Dude, I don't understand this. See, I honestly, I love the challenge of seeing how quickly I can inflate <laughs> the pad without, you know, like I feel like on the AT, I got so good. I could do like five breaths for like the the long, the longer uh, Neo Air. Like or maybe that's a little, I remember one time, <laughs> I like literally gave myself a stomach cramp, like a, like a really bad, like <laughs> not even, I used to call it a cramp. Like it literally had like, I had like pain in one of my abdominal muscles for like a, a week because I literally was bl blowing so hard and constricting so hard to get like every little, <laughs> and I was like week? trying, no, it was, it was literally like I pulled a muscle, like I pulled a muscle well, in my, now you're arguing in favor <laughs> of the pump, I think Baker. No, but this is because I was trying to do it in as few breaths as possible. So I was trying to like squeeze every last little bit of air out of my lungs. And so I literally like, I remember just clenching so hard in my diaphragm that like I pulled a muscle and like I had to be very ginger when blowing up my pad for like a week after that. <laughs> Damn. So. Well, uh, but it, I, I enjoy that part. It's kind of like, it's kind of, it's fun. like a fun challenge. Yeah. That's how I feel about hanging a bear bag too, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, there's no way I would carry one of these. I'm just gotta be honest. Yeah. Like, and maybe there's people I, out no. there that this is like, maybe this is, we're just not aware 
I'm going to cover my tracks a little bit. Maybe we're just not aware. And there are some people that like genuinely struggle with blowing up their pads, but I never met them. And I, yeah, I don't know if you have that sort of like respiratory issue. I feel like there's other aspects of hiking that are going to be more dangerous than yeah, not yeah. being able to blow up your pad, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe there's, yeah, I don't stuff understand. That I don't understand. I don't know. I guess, you know, if you're trying, if you do have some sort of like respiratory issue and you can hike slowly, but it really takes you like a long time. I mean, if it's 1.2 ounces and it's a battery powered thing, then like, sure. Why not? I guess if you like it, but I, I don't think I can't imagine a situation where I, yeah, but people are buying it. Apparently. I mean, there's YouTubers making videos about it. Like it's, cool. it's yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but anyways, um, what's, what's the next one on your list, Baker? All right. Let's see. What should I go with here? Okay. Next one is headphones or, or earbuds, basically any sort of, device that lets you listen to audio um pretty sure you i'm pretty sure you carry those yeah. right i remember on the at you listen like to stuff while hiking now oh yeah i will this say it wouldn't exist if i didn't have headphones on the at probably <laughs> yeah yeah and i will say that sometimes i will carry headphones and and i will maybe listen to like podcasts at night when i'm sleeping but i don't always do that and i pretty much never i, I don't think i've i think i've like maybe one time hiked during the day while hiking listen to audio um of any of any form like i just i just don't do it it's like i mean you know what like like you do realize that like people go out into nature and they record sounds of like birds chirping (laughs) and the wind blowing through trees and streams you know like rushing water and streams they record that and then people listen to that at home why you know why would i want to block out all those beautiful nature sounds <laughs> fair with my headphones and i'm just asking for a bear to come up behind me and just attack me right because yeah everyone knows that before bears attack they roar super loud <laughs> they big loud roar just to kind of announce their presence so you're gonna miss that if you've got if you got audio in so that's fair i don't know i just like i i, I don't have a i kind of make it, i don't even know if it makes me uncomfortable it just like feels weird like i just don't don't like especially while hiking I, I can understand like you know when you're like going to sleep at night or whatever like maybe then or if you're like just need like take a nap and you're really bored but in general i just like i rarely i mean i pretty much don't ever you like listen to audio or anything like that while I'm yeah not hiking. that's fair um i think you brought up kind of two main points to this to the safety point kind of like you know i think you're being a little sarcastic there but i mean i think most people would agree certainly i get comments no, I all think the time it's a, it's a my, real thing i yeah, think yeah you know it, not it, that the it bears not that the bear roars but i think <laughs> i would never want to do with two in at once like i actually met a hike a through hiker who had cut one end of their earbuds off and it was just one so they they were like they were like super uh ultralight and so yeah. they were like i don't need the second one they cut one it was like that was like okay if you're going to carry them like that's pretty pretty smart yeah there is a safety argument to be made there um you know being more aware of your surroundings um certainly when it comes to like trees falling and boulders and shit too i remember last year when i went back to the pct mm. when i was hiking through boulder field sometimes i would take a headphone out just to be a little bit more alert after the incident that happened the previous year um there i mean there's also the awkward thing where someone's hiking behind you and they want to pass you yeah. but you that you don't notice because you have headphones on that's happened to me before on both ends uh, being the person who's come up, come came up on somebody and, um, you know, has had someone behind me, but th- to the other point that you made the listening to nature kind of, you know, to put words in your mouth, you didn't actually say this, but I feel like the way that people present this is it's kind of like, um, taking away from the experience a little bit. It's kind of inauthentic maybe because you want to be listening to the sounds of nature. Why do you want to be listening to freaking Skrillex or whatever the hell people listen to or corn? Yeah. Um, No, corn sucks. Um, (laughs) Also, I don't think anyone's listened to Skrillex in the past like 10 years, but I don't know why I chose Skrillex. I I don't listen to anyways. um, To that point, I have found that listening to music greatly enhances my experience on trail. I freaking love it. It just sometimes like you're just like in a beautiful spot and like you're listening to like a a good song and it just I feel like it just brings out even more like euphoria for me and like even more endorphins and it just enhances the experience. In fact, like there's nowadays like um, 
if I listen back to certain songs, it will actually take me back to a place on trail where I was mm, like listening to that song. Um, yeah. And, and like certain songs will remind me of certain hikes I've done and stuff like that. And so I think this, this one maybe is a little bit more related to how you listen to music and what your kind of taste is and your relationship to music is. If you're just like casually listen to music, you don't really ever like, you know, go in on it. Um, this one might not mean as much. And then of course you might not be listening to music. You might be listening to a podcast in which case that's probably, or an audiobook or something. And you know, those are probably more like distracting, kind of taking you out of the moment rather than, than enhancing it. But, um, I don't know. It's fair. I understand why people don't use headphones, but I, I though, though I don't love the safety aspect of it. I love listening to music on trail so much that I can't see myself not bringing headphones on trail. That's fair. Actually, I never thought about like it triggering a memory or making the experience even more epic. Like, I can oh, see yeah. like you feel like you're in a movie almost like you've got the soundtrack to like this. Yeah. Thing I like to sing sometimes the- too. I, yeah, I, I like to sing a little bit sometimes when I'm going down the trail. Um, very poorly, yeah. mind you, but uh, I do like to do that sometimes. So, I mean, that's girl, that corn cover was just did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, just I'm just like walking down the trail through like this beautiful national park, and then I'm just like fucking. I don't even know. I don't even. I don't even know that many corn songs, honestly. Besides that, I don't even know what song that is where he just like does the I, weird like mumbling, know. screeching, screaming thing. Dude, corn yeah. sucks. I, I don't like corn. Uh, this is way better new metal bands out there than corn. Um. Anyways, you did mention audiobooks, and I I remember talking to some through hikers who had listened like the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy while hiking. That's actually I can kind of see that like you're kind of maybe experiencing that um, that story in a more in a different way because you're like kind of in some ways like replicating or mimicking like what's going on in that. Um, yeah, you know, in the in the content itself, which that that's actually kind of cool. I, yeah, I guess I'll admit it's kind of nice. Or there's some people out there, some psychos and. <laughs> I know they're they're hearing me say this right now. There's some people out there that listen to hiking podcasts when they're hiking, and like I could kind of understand it if you're just out for a day hike or something. But there's people I get messages all the time from people that are like, "Hey, I'm on like the freaking North Country Trail right now, listen, binging your podcast," and that makes no sense to me. First of all, why are you on the North Country Trail? Second of all, <laughs> that's the biggest problem. <laughs> that's the second of all, <laughs> no one's actually ever, but you know, the, the people on the AT and PCT mostly will be like, yeah, I'm, I'm binging your podcast. I'm in the, I'm like a thousand miles in and I can't get enough of this hiking thing, dude. So I have to listen to it all day <laughs> just, while I'm doing more it. hiking <laughs> with my hiking. <laughs> Which <yeah. laughs> I am, don't get me wrong. I'm very, very grateful for these people that listen to my podcast. Certainly. Um, but dude, what are you doing, man? The last thing I want to think about and listen to when I'm hiking is hiking. So that's kind of funny. But anyways, that is funny. Um, okay, so the next one on my list, um, I feel like you might, I can't quite remember, but I feel like out of all the ones on my list, you'd be most likely to carry this one. So this one would be a fanny pack, dude. I am uh, so over I the shut f- down the recording right uh, now. Here we go. I am here we go. Out of here. So of I here. I don't understand the f- okay. Let me back up. I understand the f- the functionality of a fanny pack. I just think they're st- I think they're goofy, dude, and I don't think they're that useful. Like, like so much more useful than any other options that like they're they're worth carrying. Um, I feel like ninety. This is an exaggeration, but I feel like a lot of the time people who carry fanny packs on trail. I'm gonna stereotype the shit out of people. I feel like a lot of the time it's just people who like keep their freaking like weed and like their drug paraphernalia in it so they can just have it ready at any point so they can be like, oh dude, freaking beautiful view. Gotta gotta toke one up, dude. <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's how people do that, right? No, um I know there's more uses than that, but I don't know. You you have hip belt you have hip belt pockets, you have chest shoulder straps on your backpack. I had a freaking camera taking up one of those one of those straps and I still didn't see the need for a fanny pack. Also, there's shorts with pockets. Maybe for the ladies, maybe not, but for men at least I'll speak to there's shorts out there that have pockets. No, I don't I don't get the fanny pack. You can't carry stuff in your pockets while like that's crazy. Okay, well, while you're running? while you're literally hiking maybe not, but like yeah, or, well, you're I feel just like swinging around everywhere and get chafing. <laughs> okay, on maybe not while you're hiking. You're asking for problems. Maybe not while you're hiking, but like in town, for instance, I feel like a major argument in favor of the fanny pack is like, oh, when you're in town, so you drop your gear off at the hotel or the hostel or whatever. 
and you know, but you want to go walk down the street to the store or to the restaurant. You don't want to carry your whole pack, but you still have like a couple things you need to carry: your phone, your wallet. Throw that in the fanny pack. That kind of shit you can just put in your pockets and when you're hiking. When you're literally on trail, then maybe yeah. it's not. Although I sometimes I would carry either usually my sunglasses in my pocket, but that's it. Just like something small and light. If it was like heavier thing, like my phone, then yeah, that would it probably end up swinging around and whacking my dick or my nuts or something. Yeah, that wouldn't be exactly. Good. It's but just um, like asking for a bad day. Okay, I don't know. But what about hip belt pockets, shoulder? Sh- there's other places to carry the stuff. Why the fanny pack? Well, why, why, okay, and, so and not, not, actually, hold on. Shut ahead, up. Shut ahead. up. I asked Got you a question it. and I'm not going to let you answer because <laughs> basically, basically the crux of my argument here is that they look <laughs> goofy and they're just a goofy okay. concept. I, I knew that that was <laughs> actually the, like, that's what I was going to, that's where I was going to get to. But anyway, do you have anything else you want to say before I, um, no, I think I rest my case. Okay. Case is right. Well, okay. So first of all, not all backpacks have hip belt pockets. Not all of them have shoulder strap pockets. Even if they do, I don't always love hip belt pockets because what happens is you take your bag off, take your pack back, backpack off and you just sit, sit on the ground and you have to kind of be careful of like how you lay it down. Cause like, I remember once I had like a pair of sunglasses or something in a hip belt pocket and I just put it down and like the, it kind of folded the pocket got folded and I, you know, it just laid on, it kind of like crushed my sunglasses a little bit. You, I never have to worry. Same with the shoulder strap ones. If it's on your bag, when you put it down, you have to like kind of gingerly put it down. I never worry about that with my with my fanny pack. Like I just, I don't know, I just don't have to. It's it's nice. Like it's right. It's everything's always right there. And it's also like I don't know. Like the pack that I have doesn't have any pockets on it. You can add them on there, but they're like you know they don't they don't work. They're not super well. Like the ones that have integrated pockets definitely work better. But I don't know. I just kind of like the the aesthetic of just having no pockets attached to the bag itself. So it's but, an aesthetic thing for you as well. I mean, it's more of the it's more of just like I don't like putting stuff down. I just really like this particular pack, and I like the pockets. You can add like they're okay, but I just I don't know. Don't want to don't want to deal with them. Okay. The other thing is that okay. So you mentioned the the look, and I mean that's that's I get it because you know you're. You're out there on the internet. You're trying to make trying to make a living <laughs> off of being a cool guy, and you're just worried that you know if you start wearing a fanny pack, you're gonna you're gonna end up destitute, right? I'm you're gonna, gonna be I living would look in a tent because you have to with a fanny pack. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Whack. And I I think you know I don't know. If, I guess I'm just like you know I, I I've just given up on trying to be cool. Like I'm just kind of don't you know. I think that's I, a point that we even, can definitely agree agree on. Yeah, so. there's literally nothing I can do to improve, you know, my my social standing. Um, the, I, no one's going to respect me anymore by not wearing. Like, <laughs> they're not even going to know it. It's just like so for me. I'm like, if I could, it's gonna if it's gonna help me, you know, carry more stuff and or carry stuff more conveniently. That's cool. I, you know, the, I, there, I, you know, there's no downside to me wearing it. I'm I'm already at the bottom of the barrel when, when it comes to. <laughs> basically any sort of like visually appealing anything so and some some men's shorts don't have pockets so yeah, yeah are they comfortable with the fanny packs i feel like i the haven't one used i one. have is very it is the one i have is very comfortable it's a i mean the one i have is called th- they're by it's by through pack it's literally like there's like an ultralight um fanny pack designed for it's not just like some rando like jan sport thing from the 90s which those are kind of cool if like you want to sport that vibe but um I don't know. I I think it's it, like the one I have is like it it's just like it's it's made by like a some guy who's like a through hiker and he, they're designed for through hiker. They're su- it's super comfortable. Um, I I love it. It's, Fair. It's, yeah. Through pack. I don't, they make, listen. Make I I know the I know um most people probably are going to disagree with me on this one. I just think it's kind of funny. Fanny packs suck. I don't like fanny packs. <laughs> that's that's just it's me. Fair. I they look they look that's goofy just me. actually. And what is, I don't know if they still make it, but I remember at one point Z Packs made something called the Fupa and it was a fanny pack. And, and so like, they're just basically leaning into the whole thing of like, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not going to look cool. You know, it's just <laughs> like a, it's, it, it just is what it is. Although I feel like I've seen fanny packs or like smaller bags become more popular recently, like not like out, off trail. Oh, like really? In the, in the, I don't know. I feel like I, which is, so now it's just becoming like a style thing. So if maybe actually if I just keep wearing the fanny pack long enough, I'm going to become like very in style by wearing it. So that's, not, that's my hope. Never know. Yeah. You certainly better hope my friend. Um, no. Hoping. Okay. 
Yeah, most people are going to hate me for this one. Um, what's the next one, Baker? All right, next one is a hammock. Hammocks. Oh no! Overrated. This is the first one that you've said that like. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. One, this Let, one really gets really really grinds your gears. I missed, dude. I yeah. Okay. What's what's what, what do you gotta say, Mister Fanny Pack? Okay, hammocks. Okay. All right. So first of all, they're like their uses like where you can take them for hiking and I, you, and you like them, but I'm pretty sure on the PCT you didn't bring one out there because you just like, can't, there's not, the trees aren't the, the, you know, the foliage is not sturdy enough to, to handle swinging a human between them. And they're just, so they have like kind of limited function, you know, functionality or utility in terms of like the type of regions you can use them in. Also, if it's like, colder you have to carry two quilts or like another an under quilt thing or you can only take it in warm weather and also like you're just carrying a swing around with you like (laughs) like, we're not we're not here to have fun like oh i sleep so great like no sleep on the ground like the rest of us and just just be unhappy like everyone else out there like you're not there to like (laughs) this isn't like if you want to sleep well like stay at home right like don't go don't go out you're not out in nature to sleep well yeah you're gonna get like half as good a sleep laying on the ground but like you know, it's just everyone deal has to deal with it. So just like, I don't know. I I, I don't know. What are you just going to like swing it around all day? Like, I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, like we just we don't live in trees. Like you're not like some sort of red panda that crawls around up in the trees and hang. Have you seen a red panda? Do you know what that is? No, no. Uh, give it oh, flash it on the screen for all the viewers who okay. don't know what red panda is. But either way, I mean, like we're not some sort of you know, tree dwelling creature that's like swinging between branches and crawling around, like, you know, just walk on the ground, sleep on the ground like everyone else. That's that, you know, that, that's all I got to say. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this hanging out in trees vibe. You know, it's not my, it's not my thing. So, all right. You brought up a number of points. Um, hammocks are way cooler than fanny packs. Let's just get that out there. I mean, okay. you I, could say I, that's I, objective. I guarantee you, you survey, you survey just anybody any amount of people. I don't people, think so. I think no. hammocks. You should be, you should put a poll. You yeah. should put a poll on your Instagram. What's yeah, cooler? I, I, I swear, I, I really want to see the results. Okay, now. maybe I, I got to remember to do this before the episode comes out. Um, yeah. Okay, you're you're wrong. Um, hammocks are cooler. Objectively, but, but wrong. you do you do you do bring up some interesting points. Beyond that, I will admit, um, in terms of the the limited amount of terrain that you can take a hammock, valid. Um, People, people all the time say you can't take a hammock on the PCT, and I think, generally speaking, it's a bad idea. I will say, though, for mo- for the majority of the PCT outside of the desert section, I think you could get away with it. Um, if you're mm-hmm. a total beginner with a hammock and you don't really know what to look for and you've never, you don't know how to set it up, then it would not be a good idea. But if you're like an experienced hanger, dude, you've been hanging and um if you know how to hang if bro. you know how to hang i think you could get away with it you would just have to be a lot more picky with your campsites um but i do think you could do it and you could sleep in it every night for the most part but i still it's it would just be very inconvenient so i i wouldn't do it um that is just a drawback of hammocks no doubt but on the contrary i will say on a trail like the appalachian trail for instance to get even more specific in areas like the White Mountains or Maine or even like the Adirondacks areas on the East Coast where the terrain is very steep and rocky and rooty, it can be very difficult to find flat tent sites in that kind of terrain. And so I think in spots like that, a hammock is actually going to give you more camping options than a tent will. So that's something to keep in mind. It, but it is very, you know, location specific. And then no, that's true. In terms of like having to carry an extra quilt and stuff. Yeah, you have to carry an extra quilt, but you don't have to carry a sleeping pad. So it kind of offsets there. Although I do think that hammock systems, I, r- right now anyways, from what I've seen, it's going to be pretty damn hard to get a hammock system that's as light as the lighter tents out there. You can still get a very lightweight hammock system. In fact, I'm kind of scheming up one. I'm trying to come up with the lightest weight hammock system I can that has a bug net and a full tarp and everything. So I'm not skimping mm-hmm. on, on, you know, comfort in regards to those. And I haven't finalized it, but I'm, my projection is that it's going to be around, what was it? Um, around 22 ounces maybe. So, 
And I'm sure. Uh, does that include the quilts? That no, no, sorry. That's so that'd be like comparing the the hammock, the bug net, and the tarp to the tent. So like a Z-Pax Plex Solo as well. You like just carry 13, a bunch of bricks 14. in your backpack. Twenty two <laughs> ounces? Are you kidding me? That's, so that's it is ridiculous. So. You you have a you have a point. The lightest hammock, at least right now, um, the lightest hammock with like full comfort bug net, full tarp and everything is probably going to be a little bit heavier than the lightest tent. But there's you can still come up with a lightweight hammock system, full comfort that's going to be as light or lighter than a lot of other tents out there. So that's something to keep in mind too. And they're just so much more comfortable, and you can sit in them. You can sit in them when you're cooking dinner, or if you're you, you can sit in it while you eat your dry, cold chips or whatever you're eating for dinner. Don't and, knock it till you try it. And it's just more comfortable. Dude, there's nothing better, Baker, than getting down a long day of hiking, struggling to set up your hammock for a half an hour. And then the setup looks a little... Uh, and then, yeah. and then <laughs> finally laying down in that thing and realizing... That the arc is off and readjusting, right. and then yeah. finally and you're sliding like, down. Yeah. I, I, no, I'm I'm joking. I I do love hammocks. In fact, I'm always going to use one on the East Coast. Any chance that I can safely use a hammock, I'm gonna use it. I love it. I love it. Once you hang, you never go back. You can't unhang. You can't once you hang. You can't dehang. You can't dehang. Uh, I don't know. I, there's got to be a pithier way to express that. Come up, someone leave a comment. You know what we're going for, okay? What, what's yeah. um? <laughs> wait, it's mine. It's my turn. You're okay, next. Yeah, next I one. just I just bashed on your favorite, yeah. you know, sacred. I love a hammock, sleeping dude. system. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna get some slack for this one. Um, overrated. Uh, so th- I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one in a little bit of a different direction, and there's. 100 percent gonna be people that give me grief for this this one is bear canisters okay and i don't i know most people out there probably don't love carrying a bear canister like no one's out there like oh dude i fucking love carrying an extra three pounds like they're not overrated in that regard i think they're overrated I, you know what, really what I'm going for here is I think bear hangs are underrated. I, I feel like there's this trend these days of people being like, oh, bear hangs are ineffective. Like the, the bear is just going to get it anyway. So either bring a bear cancer or don't even bother. And these motherfuckers haven't seen my bear hangs. That's all I'm saying, dude. I <laughs> I love a you, bear hang. You love to hang. You're you're hanging when you sleep. I love to fucking hang. You hanging. You hanging for your food. You're just like you've got <laughs> got a lot of hanging going on. I, like, this, I see a theme with your hiking style. It's a lot of hanging, and not like the sitting around kind because you don't sit around. That's no, for sure. hell no. I love a good hang, man. Um, but love seriously, I feel like in fact there's this whole article from Andrew Skirka, I think. Which to be fair, I haven't read this article in a long time, but I think he had a whole article about how like bear hangs are ineffective, and I've seen other like. You know, very like knowledgeable and well yeah, respected and, and shit, so, well accomplished you know, you, people. Like it's not yeah. just trolls saying this stuff. Like there are, I feel like yeah. there's a trend of like, yeah, like very well accomplished hikers being like, no, don't bear hang. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. It's not effective. And I, I disagree with that. Um, anecdotally, I've never had a bear get my food. But even beyond that, there's been so many times where I've set up, I've done a hang and like. I'm like, there's no way a bear is getting this. Like it would literally, the bear would have to take down the freaking branch in order to get my food bag. So here's what I think the problem is. I think the reason that people write off bear hangs is because people aren't good at them. To be honest, people don't do them correctly. They don't do them effectively. And that's how people's food gets stolen. And so then they're like, oh, well then it's bear hangs just don't work, even though it would have worked if you did it right. That's my opinion. Um, and for that reason, I think bear canisters are overrated because I feel like personally, I don't need one most of the time, unless I'm in the desert, maybe because where there's just no trees. But even in, um, I'll get off my soapbox here in a second, but even another argument you always hear is like, oh, well, it's hard to find branches. A lot of time you can't find branches. It's been very rare where I've Net, like not been able to find a branch. Certainly there's been plenty of times, especially out West where I've had to hunt around quite a bit and it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's inconvenient. Um, but I've always been able to find something eventually. And almost always it's been like a totally like 
adequate tree too. Not not like a shitty half ass tree. So bear I don't know, dude. Like I just wish that bear canister I I wish I could bear hang instead of carry a bear canister in a lot of spots. But that's just me. Like I said, a lot of people do not agree with me. <laughs> a lot of very smart people for that matter do not agree with me. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? So even like in the, in the desert, in the PCT, you're finding play. And I, I don't mean like some crappy little bush that you technically can swing a rope over. I mean, like these are like things you're like a bear could not get that. Or you're like fairly confident the bear have to try super no. hard to get in the, it. You, in the desert, kind of like I said there, I feel like the desert you is an okay. exception. But okay, but other places in the PCT, you feel like consistently you're able to get like solid hangs. Yep. Yeah, it might not be wow. a 10 out of 10 every time, but it's usually at least a 7 out of 10. Like usually okay. like a bear's not going to get this. And I, I and like I said, <clears throat> sometimes that requires you hunting around the campsite like quite a ways and kind of bushwhacking a little bit. But um I think that if you're good at hangs and you're willing to do that, which I am, then you should be allowed to opt for that over the bear canister. I would rather do that times a thousand than carry a bear canister. Yeah. So your your argument is that you have to just be really good at it. Everyone else sucks at it. And with your sample size of one, it's never happened. I've never had a bear again. Therefore, <laughs> bear hanging is the most effective. That's what, that's what your argument is what I'm hearing. Just Precisely. To Precisely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if and when... Hopefully, if a bear takes my food, like, you know, I'm going to make an episode about it because that, first of all, that'll be a hilarious episode. You, gotta, you have to bury that. You'll but, lose you know, all credibility. I will. I, you know, my purpose here is to serve the people that listen. And so if I change my mind on something like this, I'm happy, happy to to make that known to everybody. But right. but I don't know. And it's not just that my my thing's never been stolen. It's that there's so many times where I'll set it up and I'm like, you're looking at it and you're like. It, there's no way like there's literally no way it's what well, well, that it's more than 10 feet away from the branch both from the top and from the side so there's no way a bear can climb up and paw it i guess I, I always use the pct method so there's no way a bear could like go on the ground and like pull the rope and like do it i right. guess the only way that they could maybe do it is if they crawled out on the branch which a lot of the time I, I guess they could do that. They could crawl on the branch and then if they knew to like cut the rope somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something I, that's I'm happening? Curious, I'm yeah. I'm curious if that's a thing that, I mean, bears are pretty smart. Like I think there maybe is a bear out there. That's they they even that get out. into bear cancer sometimes too. That's another thing. Like there's been bears yeah. that have gotten into pretty much every single kind of bear cancer out there. Just, yeah. I, I think I'm just saying it's, it's definitely possible. Like bears are just, they're very clever and they're fairly dexterous. So like, I think it's, you know, there's probably some bears that have figured out how to do that. But yeah, maybe for the, a lot of bears, a, a solid hang probably would, they would not be able to do. Yeah. And I will admit, hanging a bear bag is definitely a skill and it's not something I'm definitely not good at. It's, so I, it's to, that, to your point, like there there is definitely some skill involved yeah. like in terms of choosing it and just the actual act of doing it, not getting stuck in like all the crappy little small branches along the way. That was the thing that always happened to me. The freaking rope would get stuck. I'm also like terrible at throwing. So like I would just miss the branch I want half the time and get stuck in some small yeah. branch and caught up and like my rope gets stuck. It's just a, a frustration. So I'd settle for like a crappy hang and I'm like, why am I, this just is what I'm saying. As a, this is what I'm saying. Pillow at this point, I just like spray the, you know, just like invite all the bears in. I was like, I don't know. So, so I will, yeah. I will concede that it is, it is a learned skill. Like it is something that you have to get good at. It's not something that you can just, anybody can just do right off the bat. Um, yeah. I just think that if you're, if you, are good at it you should be able to do it over carrying a bear canister in some spots i guess is my argument although i do understand how for some people that don't have those skills or maybe aren't as strong and can't throw well like i played baseball for most of my life growing up i'm a pretty i have a pretty good arm i can throw shit pretty far and so i like i like bear hanging if you can tell like people always say yeah. like oh it's such a pain it's such a pain I love it, dude. It's like a fun challenge at the end of the day. Um, when I first started doing it, maybe one time that I can think of, I got it stuck. But other than that, I've never gotten one stuck. Um, I've had some close calls, <laughs> admittedly. But, <laughs> oh, always close calls. But I, you know, it's not something that happens. I think it's only happened one time ever, and it was when I was first starting. Um, and yeah. so... Bear hangs, dude. I love a bear hang. I'm pro bear hang. I don't care what Andrew right, Skirka everyone. says. He sucks. Alaska's not even that <laughs> a, hard to hike in. What is yeah? What does Skirka know? Really? I mean, how much hiking has he really done? I know, right? Like, 
I'm kidding. Skirk we should do a whole man. episode where we just criticize <laughs> Skirka's, uh, you know, knowledge and just like yeah. tear down yeah. his credibility. Yeah, that would go well. Yeah, that would totally go well. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm joking. Skirk is cool. I should get him on the show at some point. <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be cool to, to get him on there. Like, get him on. That'd be pretty fun. All right, Baker, what's your next one? All right, next one. Water filters. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying to don't do anything to attempt to make the water safer for human consumption. But I'm saying that like the the class of physical water filters, so the bee freeze, Sawyer squeeze, you know, all those those types of things. Um, my preferred method is Aquamira, like those the drops, like old school. I don't know. The, well, I guess it's it's to me it's not even about it being old school. I started with using a Sawyer, um, and to be fair, like Sawyer, they're they're pretty good. I actually I don't mind them, but I just like I like the drops a lot better for a lot of reasons. So one, there's way less active like effort that you're putting in to purify the water. And then the other really big thing is that they're just more reliable. So you do not need to worry about your, um, you know, water freezing. You don't, or sorry, the, excuse me, the The uh, filter freezing. freezing. Yep. You don't need to um, worry about it getting clogged up with dirt and other detritus that just gets in there. And just like, so the to me the reliability is the, the, the between those two things I just love it and like I don't notice any taste like I know some people like say there's a taste like I it doesn't I don't know I guess maybe I just you, you get used to it or whatever but I don't know I I just I think they're just it's super convenient um and like you just I don't know they're just so much it's just so simple and reliable and it's just like you know there's some downsides which I'm sure going to bring up but I just find them like I don't know the drops to me are just super simple and just like I and it, as long as you don't run out of, of drops and they pretty much always work. So, okay. I have some thoughts on this. I do think you, you have some good points there, mainly, um, the kind of the foolproofness of it. Um, you, you know, you don't have to worry about it freezing and not working anymore. You don't have to worry about it breaking. Um, you don't have to, you, you know, there's, there's an argument to be made there for sure. Um, I think that the positives, outweigh the negatives 100% when it comes to this. So I, and I'm sure you're going to, I'm sure you're well aware of all these things. I'm honestly surprised that you feel this way, Baker. So the first thing I'll bring up is filters make it much easier to control the amount of water that you're carrying with you. And so if you're on a trail like the Appalachian Trail, for instance, that has a lot of water, maybe you don't want to carry two liters with you and so, or even a liter, maybe you don't really want to carry any in some spots. Um, you know, when you're, uh, doing your due diligence and you know that there's uh, consistent water coming up um, or maybe you just want to carry like a half liter or something. Are you really going to get out? If you only want to carry a half liter with you, are you really going to get out and just like, you know, add like a drop and a half or whatever, wait the half an hour just to drink a half liter and then like a mile later, you're going to do the same thing. With a filter, you can just stop, dip your bottle in and boom, you got as much water or as little water as you want, exact amount, and you don't have to do any waiting or any bullshit. That's another big thing is the waiting. You have to wait for the chemicals yep. to do the thing. Um, and actually, the I I did I didn't do Aquamira, but when I first started backpacking, more so out of uh, f- more so for financial reasons, because um, I didn't have any money because I was in high school. But I just got the the uh, iodine tablets because they were cheap at Walmart or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I know that's I know Aquamira is better than the iodine tablets, but the principle of having to wait for it to treat is the same. And I didn't like that at all. And so one of the biggest benefits to switching over to a filter that I noticed was being able to just dip your bottle in, screw that puppy on, and you can drink as much as you want immediately. You don't have to wait. I liked that. Uh, another another benefit is if there's like some, some floaters in there in the water, it might be some dirt, some leaves, some whatever, the filter will take care of that. And so you don't have to worry about drinking that. It's not the end of the world, obviously, if you do, but that's kind of annoying. Do um, you get my point? I think that's... Oh, I no, think the, I, I, those are all the, the same reasons that, like, I mean, I often do... Well, I don't really anymore. Usually Jessica will have a filter, and so sometimes she's using it. But I used to use a filter, but once I... <clears throat> excuse me. Once I did the Arizona Trail, or half of it, once I walked on part of the Arizona Trail, I was just like the the Sawyer was just not a it was not a good match at least for whatever I was doing out there 
it just got clogged constantly. I was back flushing it constantly, which is like not easy to do because you don't have much water. And like generally I was picking up like four liters at a time. I mean, this is going to depend on like where you are and the time of year and how much water they've had. So you, how reliable and how far spaced out the various water sources are. But sitting in like squeezing four liters of water when it's like 30 degrees out and your hands are freezing, you're touching this cold water and you're squeezing it through this like filter that's just completely like clogged up and Joe's just sitting over there in like five minutes. He's got like everything done. And yeah, he has to wait 30 minutes, but I'm spending 30 minutes squeezing like four liters of water through a totally clogged up filter that I just can't back flush to save my life. I mean, and even if I, once I back flush it, it just immediately gets clogged again. Cause the water sources are, this isn't like, you know, the PCT where you have just jugs of water, like, like every five feet along the trail. Like this is like nasty cow pond, like all just all kinds of stuff in the water. Um, I don't know. It, it for me, it was just like it, it, it was like it was like absolutely better. It was like twice, three times better than using a filter. So it is. And ever since I've started started doing that, I really haven't stopped. Like I, I pretty much will always reach for for Aquamira before I'll pick anything else. Especially like hiking in Colorado. Like even in the summer, you can get some very cold nights. Maybe it's not always freezing, but like the percentage of nights where I'm camping overnight where it's below freezing is like pretty high and so i just never want to worry about and i don't want i don't want to ever have to worry about like remembering to take the take it off and then have a cap for the bottle and then put the soy in a bag and you know so it's not leaking everywhere i don't know yeah, it's just like that's it fair. just works it works uh, super well so. hearing you talk about using aquamira on the arizona trail actually does make some sense to me i could see if you're treating if you're consistently treating like large batches of water like liters at yeah. a time which you are on those drier trails. I, I do see how it makes sense in that context. I just think for trails with frequent water, you, it would just be a huge inconvenience because you'd have, you'd basically be forced to treat at least a liter at a time, probably more when you don't need to carry that much with you. So you're just carrying more weight. So I, 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 I think you have a good yeah. point there when, when it comes to the, the drier trails. I think that's yeah. that's that's uh, something I haven't really thought about that much, to be honest. Um, so maybe yeah. I'd have I to consider that. I don't that. think that water filters are really overrated. I just knew that you use them. So this <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Discussion point. Like they're honestly for like the AT, they're they're awesome. Like I I used to start the AT, and I wouldn't <clears throat> excuse me, I wouldn't like cha- have changed that decision. It works super well there. That's fair. All right. Um, this next one's the obvious one. It's a camp chair, dude. Camp chairs are overrated. Um, Someone had to bring it up before before people start commenting this. This is what this is what people are going to say. They're still going to comment this, even though I'm saying this right now. They're going to be like, "Oh, wait till you're older, Kyle. <laughs> Hardy har. You'll be you'll be you'll be wanting a camp chair then. Wait till you're old." But no, like I just won't hike anymore. If it gets to the point it's where like I, turning your hiking card, I yeah exactly. Like if it gets retire. To the, if it gets to the point where I can't hike without a camp chair, then. I ain't hiking, dude. And also, if I have a hammock, that is my camp chair. But even other trails where hammocks aren't practical. No, dude. It's to sit on... I mean, there's never been a time backpacking where I've just been, like, so uncomfortable. I'm just, like, sitting there, like, in... Like, oh, my God, my butt is so... Like, come on, dude. It's not that bad. You're in the wilderness, like... You're not going to be perfectly comfortable, and also yeah, everything's already uncomfortable to an extent. More, more uncom- less comfortable than than you know regular life. I is, know, so. and also I've, st- I, I will admit, I have sat in camp chairs before, not backpacking, but just regular camping. They're not <laughs> you, even that. You've comfortable. Never done it. They're not even that comfortable. Like, oh yeah. I mean, this is they're 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 really not like they're not that much more comfortable than sitting on the ground because like they're so they're still meant to be light and compact and stuff. So like. They're not very high off the ground, and so like, especially for you, Baker, it'd be even worse. But even for me, uh, like, I'd be all squashed. Your up knees in there are kind of uncomfortable. And then nah. so you like extend your legs and kind of cross your but legs, you, but then but you're like you about can't. to tip backwards. Yeah, like, no. they're not. They're really not that comfortable. Um, so of course the camp chair thing is kind of like a joke and a meme with my content at this point. Genuinely though, I do not see myself ever carrying a camp chair, and I, I will um, I will die on that hill. That very. But, steep muddy rocky hill that's fair i'm pretty much in that camp unless uh unless i was doing some sort of trip where i was gonna be living in a single place for like 
a month or something. I don't, I don't like, even know. Like what an that expedition was. kind of thing. Oh, I don't know. Or I was like doing trail. You know, like they, sometimes trail crews would go out for like they don't even go uh, for a month. I don't even. I don't honestly don't even know. It's a complete cr- contrived thing. I would probably just still <laughs> sit in the ground because it's not that big a deal. But, no, it's. But not. again, I'm not old, so. Or ask half me the time, like, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people carry foam sleeping pads, and if that's the case, you can sit on that. It gives you a little cushion. Yeah. Or even I still honestly not super stoked on butt specific pads that may or may not be on this list. <laughs> but um, even that I can understand more than a camp chair. Like if you're going to bring something to caress your sensitive cheeks, then, you know, that makes more sense to me than a camp chair does. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Now you're not going to get any disagreement if you're in this one. OK, like, well, then we better just move on because. All right. Before the camp Last- chair, people start getting yeah. all I'm telling you, you you wait. There's going to be, oh, Kyle, when oh, you're I, old, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. I Shut don't up. doubt it. No, I don't doubt What's it. What's the next one, Baker? All right, last one. Full enclosed tent. Like, I, it's for me, the way to go is the tarp and the bivy. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm by myself, if I'm, with some, if I'm camping with someone else, and like, I guess they do make like two-person Bivvies. I don't know. I guess I think they do. Anyway, I don't know. If I'm going by myself though, bivy tarp. It's the it's, it's the it's the bee's knees of camping setups. And I mean, it's it's just it's they're so flexible, you know, like if you don't wanna I for me, I love cowboy camping. So like the idea of never having to like, you know, hoping that the weather's gonna be good and not having to set up my you know, my tarp, if I, half the time I just, it just rides in my pack and I never even use it, which is great. Like I never have to set it up. Um, I also love that, like, you know, you're not worrying about like, you know, wind blowing in sideways. Cause even with like some shelters, especially like the, the non freestanding ones, you get like sideways rain and like dirt dust. Like you're all just, you're just cocooned. You're cocooned in this nice little, you're kind of like a little, uh, like a little caterpillar before you pop out of the, the caterpillar thing. I don't know what that's called, but basically you're all, you're all just like cocooned up in there and it just makes you look cool. Like you just, you're just like a lot cooler than everyone else. Cause everyone else is like, Oh, I'm in a tent or I'm hammocking, which is like hammock. And <laughs> it's like, you're sleeping in a little bag. You are in a claustrophobic little bag on the ground, like a, like a hobo. It is like so cool. It is like next level ultra light. They don't even really like weigh like the, the, the you know, tarp and, and bivy doesn't really weigh less than like a lot of the really good single person tents. It's just like, it's just cool. It's just a cool factor <laughs> that you just, you can never accomplish with any other sort of shelter, you know? And the other thing is like, you can be lazy half time, not set your, not set up your, shut your, uh, tarp. And if it starts raining, you just kind of like tuck under there further and just like, <laughs> you get a little damp and it's like, yeah, whatever you don't, it's not that big a deal. So I don't know. And when it's buggy out, you know, you can you can observe the bugs like inches from your face and you can hear them. You can hear the sound of like the whining mosquito sound like so loud, <laughs> deafeningly loud. But you don't have to get bitten as long as you've got everything just like perfectly arranged. If it's a little too close, you're going to totally get bitten. But <laughs> you just get it per- if you just perfectly get arranged. You can just like because, you know, like I feel like everyone's getting bitten by mosquitoes. But like, have you ever just like want to look at one super close and just like. And like just kind of like really like you know look at the beauty of it and like enjoy just this this beautiful creature that we share this earth with you know the mosquito <laughs> one of the, i don't know i think they're just they're exceptional you know the vivian tart that's where it's at oh man what do you think so i will admit my knowledge of bivies and tarps is zero i know nothing about these things zero um you don't even know what a tarp you use a tarp when you're hammocking it's basically like a okay imagine, I, okay i mean take like your hammock, <laughs> take your hammock lay it on the ground and like that's that's the bivy and then the tarp okay. is the tarp it's i mean like, like, you know all about it okay fine i still feel like i don't um but what do you want to know i'll tell you all about it if you can't tell i, really I like don't really tarps. i'm not interested to be honest okay well actually no that's not that's not entirely true i am interested I, I think it'd be fun to do just like a one nighter where I go as light as humanly possible and just sleep on, you know, the Gossamer Gear one eighth pad and mm. just bring a small tarp and that's it. And, you know, don't bring a stove and just go super ultra light. Um, I would do that for like a night, maybe or just for shits and gigs. But in terms of like through hiking or even anything longer than just a night, 
not interested in not having a fully enclosed tent. Um, or, you know, you know, like a Z pad, like a single wall tent is fine, but you know what I mean? Like a full, full mm-hmm. protection, full bug protection, everything. Um, not doubting that you can't do it. Obviously people do it and they're fine, but I just feel like it's maybe similarly to the bear hang. It's a, something you have to practice, something you have to learn. And I know there's going to be uh, a learning curve there. And to be quite honest, I just don't feel like dealing with it. And I also think I probably wouldn't sleep as well. I, I just feel like even if I was in a great spot and I was protected, I set up the tarp perfectly or whatever. I still feel like, I don't know. I still feel like I wouldn't sleep as well. So not really interested. Sorry, Baker. I mean, again, like it, it elevates you to a new level of cool. You're just not, you're not going to be able to accomplish that, but you know, you have to (laughs) sacrifice again. Yeah. It's, it's not nearly as fun or convenient or, you know, comfortable as anything else, but you know, life is about sacrifice. And so if you want to, achieve that level of elitism if you want to basically make you feel like you're a lot better than everyone else out there um and no and for sure guarantee you're gonna be less comfortable bivy and, and tarp that's the way to go so it's Whatever fine i get it no, no, it's not say. it's not for everyone it's not for every, some people just need to hang in the trees you know hanging bro hanging out or whatever yeah. you're doing there whatever i don't know that's that's cool i'm not gonna judge your lifestyle so just get, you do your thing do your thing whatevs dude um so my last one, I'm torn between two. I feel like both of these are low hanging fruit. I'm not going to do butt pads. I decided because we already talked about that. Um, this so these two, I guess we'll just say uh, the first overrated. To be honest, this one I don't think is overrated anymore. Maybe it used to be back like when I was first getting into backpacking. Solar chargers on trail. I feel like you don't see those very often anymore. Um, maybe they're getting better, but I, I don't know. Um, and then the other one is pack covers. Also something you don't see that often anymore. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely used to be a big thing though. And you still do see them. Um, certainly from time to time pack covers. The big problem is every single pack cover has a giant hole in it. And that's the hole because it doesn't, you know, you put it you on your to, backpack. You to, you so put the backpack they leak. Yeah. You're still going to get water in there. I just think you're, I, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but, um, you're just better off with a pack liner, nylon foam, or trash compactor bag. Even I'll go as as far to say that I think even a, a regular old trash bag would still be better lining your pack than a pack cover. But I don't know. Well, Maybe especially that's if you have old. a waterproof like fabric. Oh bag. yeah, that, like, that's they're not so like, true. They're actually. not like waterproof where you submerge them, but like they're like you know the, the water's not soaking in to the fabric yeah. of the bag. That's I mean, so like true. maybe the seams. A lot of backpacks through, so. nowadays are even like pretty damn waterproof. What's that mean? Like they're made of waterproof fabric. So I think yeah. the, because of that, those have become super popular. I think because of that, yeah, pack pack covers are definitely, uh, even even <clears> if you don't have waterproof fabric though, totally agree. Pack yeah. liner, 100%. Um, that's all I got to say about that. That's it. I agree with you on that one. I think, I think, like Joe didn't even have a pack. He had just a waterproof. I mean, he has, it was like a Dyneema bag and he didn't even have like a pack you know, that's liner, bold. which I don't, that's bold, but it was in Arizona. It just like, yeah, doesn't really, it, it didn't really rain much. I mean, it could it obviously Still. depends on time of year, but that <laughs> it is, takes it bold, one time to get hypothermia. It's bold, but he's a, he's a bold guy when it comes to that kind of he's stuff. A so. He's a bold guy. Bold guy. Baker. Thank you so much. Even You're though welcome. most of this was you shitting on my gear choices, I still thank you. Well, I mean, I just had, I, you know, someone has to put you in your no, place. No, that, make, you know, that makes up. it interesting. We don't want a yes man, okay? Um, also, I think your oven's ready, by the way. Um, yeah, Jessica's <laughs> starting some rice because dinner time is, is approaching. But it, you can just cut that. You just cut the, well, you can't cut it out now. Now we're, it's okay. It's okay. She's apologizing. She's it's feels, okay. She feels awful. It, Kyle wouldn't, says, it wouldn't be a Kyle banger says it's episode. Not okay. Kyle says <laughs> he said it's not. He specifically said not. It wouldn't okay. be a banger episode if Jessica couldn't be heard during the background doing That's some obscure true. task at some point. So exactly, it's part an of an obscure it. task like cooking. Um, obscure, yeah. <laughs> Baker, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and. That's going to do it, everybody. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a, a fun one. And I think we still had like some good insight here, too, as well. I think it was totally. a good mix of fun. Oh, we had amazing, amazing insight. Like, you know, I think it was great. Yeah. I think it was great. Amazing insight. Um, that's going to do it, everybody. Dude, 
subscribe. Let's get this channel to 10,000 subscribers and let's get the show to a thousand five-star reviews on iTunes and on Spotify. I'd like to thank my sister for leaving a five-star review on iTunes. By the way, she wrote, Kyle is my brother. Um, So be like my sister and leave a five-star review and I'll see you next week. Boom, boom, boom.